Last fall on our program, we showed you the gourds that we harvested from our garden. We told you that they needed to dry over the winter and that we would make something out of them the next year. Well, we're here to fulfill our promise and we've gone one better. We've actually located a gourd expert over here near Grand Lake in eastern Oklahoma to show us some different types of gourds and to help us do some gourd crafting. And that is Jan Meng. Hey, Steve. Hi, Jan. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Welcome to Hungry Holler. All right. Thank you. What have you got there? Well, these are some of the gourds that we grew, and you can see they've got a little bit of uh, stuff growing on them. And As well they should. They're doing everything a gourd should do at this stage of its life. Okay. You've done very well. Okay. Well, thank you. Can you show us uh, a few of your gourds and some of these interesting things you've got around here? I'd love to. I, gourds are my favorite topic. All Come right. on in. Okay. I'll just set these right here. This is kind of an interesting bunch of gourds here I've got for you, Steve. I bet you've never seen one this big. That's a gourd? This is a gourd. That's incredible. It's an enormous gourd. It's the biggest one I've ever had. It's so big I can't put my arms completely around it. That is a big gourd. Especially when you consider that gourds are an annual. This grew in one season. Everything was hitting on all cylinders when this gourd was growing. It's a miracle almost because not only did this gourd grow, but it also had to dry. So it grew in one season and then it probably took it about another year to dry properly. Gourds are about 90% water, and all that water has to dissipate in order for a gourd to survive eternally. Okay, what type of gourd do you call this one? This is a Lagenaria sicararia, which is the hard shell gourd. It's a member of the cucurbit family, which is melons and cucumbers and that sort and of squashes. thing. Squashes. Squashes, exactly right. But whereas all those fruits will eventually wither and rot, once a hard shell dries properly, it's hard forever. All right. And that's what makes them so useful in humankind. The interesting thing is this is exactly the same kind of gourd as this. These are both Lagenaria sicararia. They just differ in size, obviously, and a little bit on the shape. Well, this is a nice collection, Jan. What, what type of gourd is this very long one here? Steve, this is a classic dipper gourd. A dipper is characterized by a long neck and a round body. This one is a little extraordinary, however, because it has a knot in it. Not only are gourds fun to deal with after they've dried, but they're fun to deal with while they're growing. While they're growing, they're very malleable and flexible. And there's a gentleman who, this is what he likes to do. He's known for tying knots in necks. So this has to be done during the growing season when the Correct. gourd's green. There's, there's no way you're going to do that after it's dry. Exactly right. Okay. It has to be done while they're flexible. And it's not an easy thing to do because if you exert just a little too much pressure, then you break the gourd. And of course, that's fatal. And that's the end of it. But it does make for an interesting gourd. Gourds can also be grown in molds. Um, if they're grown in a rocky area, sometimes they'll grow between rocks. And that will affect the shape of the, of the gourd when it's finished growing. This is interesting too, Steve. I'm sh you notice this, I'm sure. This is Different gourd color. skin. Exactly. Exactly. Looks like you've, you've, you've stained this or, or painted it or something. It does look that way, but what I've done here is I cleaned all of the gourd except for this top part. This is the gourd skin, and you can see it's kind of mottled and spotted. And if you look closely, you can see it's reflected here in the shell. This has been cleaned. This skin has been removed, and this gives you this lovely honey-colored shell that Lagenarias are renowned for. This is my canvas. This is also a dipper, whereas this one was grown on a trellis to give you this straight neck uh -huh. and pull the knot through. This dipper was grown on the ground. Okay. And as it was on the ground, it kept growing, but the ground was a force against the growth, and so it, something had to give, and the neck curled. Okay. So you can get a lot of fun shapes that way. This is an interesting one. This looks sort of like the uh, caveman club gourd that we grew. It does look very similar. This is a dolphin or a maranca. And I have a lot of kids that come out and say it looks like a Klingon gourd. Uh, and it does if you yeah. see the, the veins here. This is characterized by veins. And this is a really good example of it. But this gourd has one little thing that keeps it from being perfect, in my opinion. And that's it doesn't have a stem. Oh, okay. Stems are critical to me. I love stems. And the stem on this was broken off. 
but it's still a lovely gourd and very interesting shape. Okay, well, what are some more of these back here, Jan? These, this one here, Steve, is an interesting gourd. I grew this. This is a very thick gourd. I can tell just by the density of it. I grew this one, and I can tell that this is one of my, I remember, of course, because I'm intimately involved with all my gourds. <laughs> but when I cut this, I didn't cut from here from the vine. I cut it on the laterals. Doing it this way gives you a knot at the top of the, of the stem here where you can tie a cord around it, hang the gourd while it's in the drying process in the winter time, and it gives you a way to hang it from your overhang or trees or wherever you'd like to hang them so you can watch them all winter as they dry. Okay. Now, we dried our gourds indoors, but Jen, you prefer to dry all yours outdoors. I really do, Steve. That's the way nature prefers it. And it, they'll freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw, and then come spring, the ones that make it are the tough gourds that you really do want. And I always think it's best to let nature take its course. Kind of weed out the, the weak ones. Exactly, exactly. This is an interesting warty gourd. This is interesting. You see a lot of warty ornamental gourds. Uh, they're what you see in the grocery store around Thanksgiving time, and they have some nice colors to them, but they're an ornamental gourd, which is entirely different from the hard shell. So eventually, the ornamental is going to rot. Okay. This is interesting because this is a hard shell warty, which is rather unusual. This is hard, and it will stay so forever, and is essentially eternal. Okay. Well, this one has a, an interesting mosaic on it. What, uh, what caused that? This is a beautiful little gourd, and note the great stem on this. Mm -hmm. But what has caused this, Steve, is while the gourd is drying, the skin peels and splits, and so that will weather more darkly. So then you can get these fabulous patterns here, and that's exactly what's happened here, and it's kind of webby looking, which is another reason why it's nice to put them outside, because it enhances this drying process. Okay. Well, we have several gourds here and uh, we'll come back a, a little bit later and you'll show us how to make something but I'm uh, glad to I definitely want to see some of the uh, different gourd crafts and different ways that uh, gourds can be used we use gourds for everything here at hungry holler this you probably notice these this is buffalo gourd which I know you're familiar with this is an Oklahoma gourd one of our natives Exactly, and I've heard that they're a perennial. Is that so? Absolutely. They can have huge uh, root structures underground. Is that right? Well, that makes them really unique in gourddom because other gourds are annuals. I like these so much because they're Oklahoma natives, but I also like them because they're fun to string. They are very thin-shelled, so I can't really use them in my work, but I love having them around and stringing them. And I've had these up for a number of years, and they just hang in there. And they're lightweight, so they're easy to use in this manner. I think they're really a lot of fun. They look nice. We'll Thank you. See what's inside. All right. Steve, welcome to my studio. This is gourd heaven for me. I have all kinds of gourds in here. And most all of them are Laginaria sicararia, even though they vary in shape and size. Looks like you've got some really colorful things on this shelf over here. I do. This is just kind of a small collection of examples of folk art, folk gourd art from around the world. These are Mexican gourds, highly decorative, but they do something plastic with the stem, which is interesting, but I like a more organic look. And also, they've plasticized the interior of the gourd. You can see it's painted. I never do anything to the inside of my gourds. I like people to know that they're an organic vessel. This was painted by my father, Arthur, who is also an artist. It's like a cheetah? It does. It, I believe it is, and it's fun because he's put the spots clear up into the stem here, uh, which I like. And you know how much I like stems. Yeah. This is an example of Peruvian folk art. It's highly incised, and this is all done by hand. And is this kind of burned on here? It is. That's exactly what's happened here. They take a burning stick, and then this is charred. It's just beautifully done, especially when you know what they deal with as far as no mechanical or electrical tools. This is all done in a very organic way. It's very difficult and so well done. Very nice piece. It is a very nice piece. And look how thick this one is. Wow. It's a gourd after my own heart. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And so well crafted. 
I love it. Looks like some little uh, musical instruments there. Yes, these are maracas. Of course, everybody has seen gourd maracas. And these are vintage. I love the pink and green combination on those. Very colorful. Very colorful. I like it a lot. Well, Jan, back here on the wall is a really large gourd. What type is that? That is a large gourd. This is a zuka. And it's one of the few gourds that had a commercial life. Before the 1950s, zukas were grown to make fruitcake filling, hmm. believe it or not. This other one is an example of Asian gourd art. The one in the middle here is Mexican, which I absolutely love as well. It's completely different from what we looked at previously. And then the snake is from Africa. I wouldn't have even thought that was a gourd. I know. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. You're only limited by your imagination. Well, Jan, right here behind you is a... Uh... Looks like a musical instrument made out of a gourd. That's exactly what it is, Steve. This is a sitar, which is the national instrument of India. And the resonating body here is a gourd. Incredible. It is incredible, especially when you consider this is a wood placement here. It's been done so well. They must have steamed the wood because it fits so tightly. And I'd love to know what kind of adhesive they used here. Incredible. This is all bone inlaid. The gourd has been wounded, so it would never stand stringing again. But to this day, uh, sitars are made from gourds. I saw Ravi Shankar on television recently, who is the acknowledged master of the sitar, and he was playing an electric gourd sitar. I can't believe it. I know. Well, Jan, let's uh, look around some more at the stuff you've got outside Let's here. do. Well, Jan, I really like this birdhouse you've got on this post over here. It's got a nice little bird painted on there, and I like the, the way you've used the stem as a little perch. Oh, thanks, Steve. I like that, too. It's all natural, all organic. And believe it or not, I have a family of bluebirds that are nesting in that gourd. I've often heard you're not going to get bluebirds in anything but a box, but I have proved them wrong. I have several families and several gourds. All right. In incredible. And uh, this gourd hanging from this uh, piece of artwork is used as... This is a feeder. I uh, feed black oil sunflower seeds and gourds make great feeders because they're enclosed so they're really protected and they can't kick the seeds out so you don't have quite the mess or waste with a gourd bird feeder. And uh, with the uh, feeder up there your, uh, your pet Rooster Stan can't <laughs> yeah. get to those. Right, right. It keeps him out of the way for sure. All right. Well, this is a, a neat little whimsical uh, planter and piece of artwork you've got here. Well, thanks, Steve. I can't stand to let any part of a gourd go to waste. So years ago, I started finding ways to use every piece of a gourd. And this is just the top of a gourd that I cut. I made a bowl or something out of it. So it makes a nice little cavity to grow this yellow moss. When the season progresses more, this will all be hanging over the springs, and it's really a nice look. I really like that organic look. We've used the uh, gourds in several ways to uh, create planters, uh, like you've got with this, this large one. Yes, this is an intact gourd. You can see the stem is here. This gourd grew this way. This is the way it wanted to grow. It was flat on the bottom because it grew that way. And I just put these little wild asters in it, and it makes a really nice planter. And I've had this for years. Gourds are really surprisingly long-lived. It just depends on the mystery of genetics and how things are going. But this was a pretty thick gourd, and uh, it seems to like being a planter. Kind of looks like a, a melon. It does, very much so. Well, I can't wait to see what you've got in this little gallery. Oh, well, I can't wait to show it to you. Welcome to the Hungry Holler Gallery, Steve. Wow, you've got lots of nice stuff in here. Thank you. You know, I think if the average person just glanced at this, they would think it was a, a piece of pottery or earthenware or something. People often mistake it for that, but it is a gourd. This, in particular, is a lovely shape. I think it's very graceful. But again, once you look inside, remember I said I'd never paint the inside of my gourds, and this is a perfect example. I don't want it to be mistaken for anything but an organic piece. And it's carved. All my work is burned on first, Steve. Then it's carved. Then I burn it some more. Then it's all painted. And then my finish is a hand rub finish. Okay. Gourds are heirlooms. In gourd using cultures, they're passed down through the generations. And that's how I feel about them. Okay. 
And these, these are bird feeders also? These are. These are just a simpler gourd, very uh, lightly worked. But you can see they're very thick. This would be great to put sunflower seeds in, and the birds just love it. It's so fun to see them go in and out of there. And you've got some drain holes in the bottom? I do. I'm always cognizant of that. Keeps good circulation going. This could also be planted and used as a container for a nice vine or something. They make lovely planters as well. Okay. So some of these gourds, uh, you could actually put lamp, uh, candles in or, or exactly. make them into little lamps. I do that a lot as well. This is a good example. It's open on the top here, and you can put a votive candle in them. And I cut with negative space in mind, so it'll put nice shadows on your wall, shine through the carved spots, and it really does look as beautiful in the night as it does in the day. Okay. I really like this, this large one, the way you've carved all the way through it on, on oh, all sides. Thank you, Steve. I like these, too. I do make these baskets. This had such an interesting stem. Look at that nice curve. Mm. And you'll notice the dot. The dotted stem is my mark. And this is hummingbirds. And they're all around the piece. They're in a citrus grove. I had a friend who had hummingbirds in her citrus grove. And that's what inspired this particular piece. It's beautiful. Thank you. So you, you actually enter these in competitions? I do. I've won several awards for my art, which is very flattering. Well, I can see why. Oh, thank you very much. I told you I don't let any piece of a gourd go to waste. And this is kind of a whimsical example of this. I took a gourd, and then I took all the shards and all the little pieces and some uh, seeds, and I put them all on this piece, and I, I like it. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. And again, you'll notice the dots. I always have to have the dot. All right. Well, back here, it looks like you've got some uh, small gourds with uh, interesting little stems here. Are those, those, those don't look like gourd stems. It's not, Steve. This is grapevine. I go in the woods, and I harvest grapevine, and I'm always looking for nice curly cues or something for my perches. My perches also go all the way through the gourd so that it makes a nice, stable piece. Although I don't think a whole lot of those highly worked ones go outside. <laughs> okay. I like the, uh, the picture frame in the background there with the, uh, the gourd shards also. Yes, another perfect example of my obsession uh, and not letting any piece of a gourd go to waste. I like the look of those frames. <laughs> okay. Well, Jan, this is uh, just an incredible display, so... Thanks. Let's go and uh, make something. Let's do. Well, see, you've got the gourds soaking in these tubs of water. I do, Steve. The secret to cleaning gourds is to get them wet. Uh, if you try to clean a gourd while it's dry, it's thankless, it's frustrating, and you'll soon grow to hate the process. But I just soak them in a tub of water. These I have in a burlap bag. Simply, it'll hold them down. They have to be weighted with these bricks. So they don't float to the top. Exactly. And you can see how much easier. I just use a common pot scrubber. And once they're oh, yeah. wet, it just peels right off there. And again, you can see the great design here that's caused by where the gourd skin split and it weathered a little darker. Nice character. Yes, and you can see how much easier it is to yeah. clean a wet gourd than a dry gourd. Yeah, that'd work great. So what are we going to make, Jen? Well, see, since this is Oklahoma gardening, I thought we should do a planter. Sounds so good. We're going to take this gourd, which is a lovely round gourd, and I love this gourd. It's nice and thick, as you can see, but the varmints got to it and ate a hole in it. And so they did it on the bottom, which kind of diminishes the uses for it. But I thought we could turn it upside down and hang it. And this is going to be a hanging planter. Sounds like a good idea. I think so, too. Wear your mask. When okay. you drill gourds, you need to wear a mask. They, the cucurbitacin in it is rather toxic. And you should always wear a mask when you're going to be drilling or grinding on a gourd. I'm going to take this jigsaw, and this is what we're going to do. This already has a hole in it, so we don't have to pierce the gourd shell with uh, an X-Acto knife to get the blade in. Okay. So we're just going to cut away here. That's right. We're going to cut the top.
That's what the inside of a gourd looks like, Steve. Lots of dry pulp. Lots of dry pulp. And the seed is embedded in this dry pulp. It's full of seed. Okay, you're, you're pretty good with that saw. So when you're uh, doing those vases, you, 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 you do the little design, the giraffe's heads and... Right, I use a different kind of tool, but same principle, okay. exactly right. And this, we just have to peel out and clean the interior. Since this is going to be a planter, we don't have to be real fussy about the sure. interior. Nobody's going to see it after it gets filled with dirt. But you can see that gourd pulp is kind of leathery. You see it has a lot of flexibility to it. Sort of spongy. It is very spongy. I think it'd make great paper. One day I'm going to attempt that. But we're lucky. It's all coming out in these nice big chunks. And see the seeds in there? Oh, yeah. These are my gourd scraping tools. We don't really need it too much on this, but I just use a variety of things that you just can find in your house. Now this one is specifically for gourds, but I also use just big spoons. Anything that you can scrape the interior with works just fine. So now, Jan, that we've uh, cleaned out the inside, what, what else have we got going on here? Well, we've sanded the edges just to give it a nice smooth finish. Now we can put the New Guinean patient in there. Okay. Steve, another thing you can do with these gourds is you can put some drain holes in it if you need to. But if you water judiciously, you don't really need them in a gourd because that's the gourd's job is to get rid of water. And so it's hard to overwater something that's planted in a gourd. Okay. All right. So, but it would be okay to, to put those holes in sure. if, if you chose to. Exactly. If you feel better doing it, it's no problem to do it. Okay. Well, that's going to look really nice. I love the... Uh, would you hold it, Steve, and we'll put some... In colors and textures here. I love sedum. I think it looks great in a gourd, especially since this is going to be hanging. It'll give it a nice look as it's hanging above the viewer. Nice uh, low-maintenance plant there, too. With it the is. Very it grows tough. everywhere, and I just love it. I think it makes a really nice addition to any potted plant. Good choice for a, a hanging planter. Thank you. Okay. Now, I always like to give them a good drink. And with an appropriate uh, watering device yes, there. I use these gourd dippers to water all kinds of plants. They hold a surprisingly large amount of water. And you have some control over where it goes. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that looks nice. Uh, we're going to hang this somewhere? Yes, I have a place for it, Steve, right over here. This is just something I got out of my my iron yard, and I think it's a cog plate or something. Okay. Can you help me? Sure. Slide that right in there and work the plants around the chain. Looks okay. Well, there we go. There. Well, Jan, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thanks for educating us and uh, telling us all about the uh, art of gourd crafting. It was my pleasure.